What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 last second decisions uh, at WWE WrestleMania, which changed history. Now, sometimes WrestleMania is already quote unquote set in stone, and then maybe an audible gets called, maybe the day before or the day of the show. And that has happened in the past, you know, like uh, with the whole, uh, the reason what I can think of is Brock Lesnar. Roman Reigns, they were main eventing again. No one really cared. People, you know, assumed Brock was going back to the UFC. So a lot of people assumed, all right, well, this is going to be Roman Reigns' coronation and getting the championship or whatnot. And no, they pulled an audible. They legit pulled an audible, had Brock Lesnar bludgeon the guy, and he still retained. So, you know, things can happen on the fly. You know, it's never truly always set in stone so we're gonna check out some of these moments appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel let's do the damn thing a wrestlemania is wwe's premiere event and you would logically think that every specific detail of the show is planned out in advance and there's no room for major changes however wwe is prone to making last minute changes to their signature show and this can range from match outcomes to what match is set to main event the pay-per-view mm -hmm. join us as wrestlemania looks at 10 huge last minute changes at a wrestlemania event be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos <coughs> and follow us on facebook for exclusive lists also check out our new channel wrestlemania shorts Number 10, Stone Cold Steve Austin wins at WrestleMania 18. A Stone Cold Steve Austin would collide with Scott Hall at WrestleMania 18 and WWE fans firmly expected Austin to get the win and move back into the main event scene. However, they planned for Hall to get the win. Vince McMahon was of the belief that WWE needed to re-establish Hall and there was no better way to do this by having him defeat Austin on the grandest stage of them all. Mm. It was reported at the time that Austin wasn't pleased with the match with Hall and he especially wasn't pleased with the idea of losing. When Hall arrived to WrestleMania 18 with a hangover, Austin had enough and he oh. spoke with McMahon who agreed that the match finish should be changed and Austin should come out with the W. Wow. Number 9, Sheamus wins gold at WrestleMania 37. That's crazy. One of the most underrated matches of 2021 was the WrestleMania 37 match between Sheamus and Matt Riddle. Mm -hmm. The match would be for the US title and the it was match pretty was good. pure physicality. It was really good. The original good, plan actually. for the match was for Riddle to retain his US title but a last minute creative change resulted in Sheamus coming out with the win. According to a notable source, Fightful Select, the idea was for Riddle to win and for the storyline between the two to carry on. However, in a last minute rewrite, Vince McMahon eventually decided to have a title change and Sheamus would once again become a US champion. That's crazy. Number 8, Brock Lesnar goes on first, WrestleMania 35. Our fans were curious as to where Brock Lesnar's match with Seth Rollins would take place on I the remember WrestleMania that. 35. I remember that. Like, I, was, I was very surprised that it went on first, but... I mean, he got in and got out. <laughs> he got in, did the job, and he was out. I was like, oh, shit. I was not expecting that at all. By match card. The match was set to be for the Universal title, and WWE had already confirmed the main event featuring Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch, and Charlotte Flair, so fans theorized that the match would be in the semi-main event position. However, in shocking fashion, the match took place first. I was so According surprised. According to Rollins on an appearance on the Broken Skull <clears throat> Sessions podcast, the match was originally supposed to take place before the main event, but Lesnar wasn't happy. Lesnar believed that placing his match in that spot wasn't a smart move and that it would hurt both his match with Rollins as well as the main event match featuring the three women. Initially, when the card came out, we were supposed to go right before them. Brock was like, no, we need to do something different. It's going to hurt both matches if they're back to back. Mm. It's going to be taking the wind out of the sails of both finishes. We need mm. to switch this up. Let's do something we've never done. Let's go on first. It took some convincing to push Vince in that direction, but within wow. an hour of the show, we didn't make the switch until an hour of going out. Now, this was 100% the correct move on the part no, of Lesnar, it was. the fans love seeing Rollins capture the title in the WrestleMania opener, and an exhausted crowd five hours in likely wouldn't have had the same energy. You know what? That was a smart audible. Them going out first definitely helped, because if they would have came out right before the main event, that main event would have already been more dead, with, dead than it already was. Like, that would have killed any energy they had for that women's main event. So, that was a smart move. Number 7, calling an audible at WrestleMania 36. A WrestleMania 36 took place in front of zero fans during the COVID-19 pandemic. Horrible this time. was a bizarre WrestleMania, and it was really hard to re-watch. One match that received criticism was Edge's last man standing encounter with Randy Orton. 
The match went on for what seemed like a lifetime, and fans mm -hmm. speculated that the two legends were making spots up on the fly. Well, according to Edge, due to last-minute changes, he and Orton had to call an audible and improvise virtually the entire 37-minute match. Oh, up. shit! Edge would discuss this in depth during an episode on the After the Bell podcast, and the Hall of Famer revealed, The time that we filmed, it didn't coordinate with the ideas we had, so we found out that on the day hours before, so we had to change everything, and that's truly what you saw was a 40-minute audible. Wow. I'm proud of that. I'm proud that we, without uttering two words to each other, were able to do that. That's... I will always be able to look back and again thrive on challenges and I love challenges and talk about a massive challenge. Wow. So can we do this? Can we pull that off? They certainly did. Number six, the winner of the inaugural. That's incredible. They literally pulled a 40 minute audible. <laughs> That's insane. They just went out there. They know each other. Let's do this. That's incredible. Very, very, very dope. I did not know that. Wow. Or Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal WrestleMania 30. <laughs> At WrestleMania 30, WWE launched the annual tradition that is the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. The match mainly exists to get as many people as possible onto the WrestleMania mm -hmm. match card, which is certainly appreciated. <sighs> WWE originally planned for the big show to be the inaugural winner of the match, but this was changed last minute in favor of Cesaro. Which Luckily was a good for the big moment. show, he would be awarded with the Battle Royal victory the following year, making him the second winner of the annual matchup. Number 5, Brock Lesnar retains WrestleMania 34. At the main mm -hmm. event collision between Lesnar and I Roman Reigns about at WrestleMania 34 was heavily panned by fans. The Universal title match was met with negative chants as fans simply didn't want to see the two wrestlers perform in the main event slot of the show. No. The original plan for the match was to see Reigns walk out as the new Universal Champion. Mm -hmm. However, Vince McMahon became reluctant to crown Reigns after he wasn't convinced the crowd wanted him as champion. McMahon therefore decided that Lesnar <laughs> should retain. This was a dreadful decision that fans rejected. Yeah. Evelyn Lesnar knew what was completely the wrong decision as he would infamously uh -huh. throw his Universal title at McMahon <laughs> Oh, that nigga threw that shit. Get this shit out of here. I was like, damn. He's the Brock is the only person that can get away with doing that to Vince McMahon. Because it's Brock Lesnar. Unfortunately, that's that's just how it is, bro. I mean, that it was a lose lose. You gave him a title, the the fans were gonna boo. The fans were gonna boo regardless. Brock retains, the fans were gonna boo. This was a lose lose situation. It was lose lose. Number four, the new main event, WrestleMania 19. When The Rock vs. Austin was announced for WrestleMania 19, it seemed like a certainty that it wouldn't main event the show. These two icons of WWE were bigger than any world title, and it was without question the biggest match on the show. Oh, sure. However, due to Austin being in hospital the night before the show due to a serious health scare, WWE weren't convinced that Austin and Rock could meet the high expectation that fans had, <laughs> so they ultimately decided to have Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle take the main event position. Number 3, Hulk Hogan and that was a good match too. at WrestleMania 9. Hulk Hogan <clears throat> made a career out of politicking his way to the top, and WrestleMania 9 was no exception. When Hogan discovered that the original plan was for Bret Hart to drop the title to Yokozuna, Hogan went directly to Vince McMahon to influence the creative. Hogan convinced McMahon that he should come down after the match and challenge Yoko to an impromptu match. Hogan went one step further by outright <laughs> stating that he should win the title to send the fans home happy. According to Hart, the locker room was stunned and disappointed by Hogan's actions, mm -hmm. and Hogan winning the title was a WrestleMania ending that never should have happened. Mm. Number two, Seth Rollins cashes in at WrestleMania 31. One of the greatest cashes of all time. WrestleMania 9 went off the air with fans being disappointed, WWE managed to book one of the most exciting and compelling WrestleMania endings of all time at Rats. WrestleMania 31. WWE booked Seth Rollins to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase during the Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar main event to become the world champion. This was a thrilling moment that closed out one of the best WrestleMania events of Facts. the modern era. This wasn't always planned, as originally Vince McMahon was set on crowning Roman Reigns as a new face of the company. Yep. Numerous sources conflict as to when McMahon decided to go with Rollins, as some say it was the weekend of the show, and some go so far as saying it was a few hours before the show had gone on the air. What is confirmed by former WWE writers, as well as Rollins, is that Rollins himself found out that he would be cashing in whilst WrestleMania 31 was live on the air. Wow. And number one, 
the streak ends WrestleMania 30. Ooh. Upon the announcement that Brock Lesnar would take on The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30, it seemed like Taker was going to once again successfully defend his streak. That's where we are. However, about. when Lesnar pinned the dead man's shoulders to the mat at WrestleMania itself, fans were left speechless. This wasn't the initial plan, as it was believed by everyone that Taker would get the win, but it was Vince McMahon who decided that now was the time to end the streak. According to Dave Meltzer, McMahon decided on the day of the show to allow Lesnar to end the streak. Fans still debate whether or not this was the correct move, but WWE's strong presentation of Lesnar since WrestleMania 30 has signaled that it was perhaps the right move from a business perspective. But there you have it, folks. And Take that's the thing. I'm going to always stand on the, on the grounds of Brock Lesnar is Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar doesn't need the streak to be Brock Lesnar. We know he's legit. He has won titles in the UFC. He is legit as legit get. You don't need to end the streak for someone that you know. As soon as he comes back to the company, he automatically catapults himself to a title contention. You didn't need him to beat the streak to be a number one contender at any point. It's Brock Lesnar. What are we talking about? You didn't need to end the streak. I think part of it, and a lot of people have said this, part of it was because that was around the time they started the WWE Network. They wanted to get people to subscribe to the WWE Network. Like, hey, if you get the WWE Network, you can you won't miss these crazy moments. That's really what, it, in my opinion, what it came down to. It wasn't more so to build up Brock. It's Brock. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I'm still of the people. Or I'm still one of the people that feel like either don't have his streak in. Or have Roman Reigns be the guy to do it. Because he could have got, he would have benefited more, in my opinion, in turning heel. Because everyone would have hated him. And it would have catapulted him to where he is now. But we would have had that many years sooner. And we could have had great, fantastic feuds even back then. So, that's just my thought on it. But comment down below. Let me know what are some of the uh, most craziest uh, last minute decisions from this video that you were su surprised about shocked about or didn't know let me know down below but i appreciate all of the support you guys shown on the channel road to 150k i'm still in the speed of youtube wrestling champion of the world and you're in the clutch world heavyweight champion appreciate y'all kicking me see you on next one peace